the word he told me it pierced my heart and I could feel the angels literally attending my wedding then I purposed so now I need to go and propose to the lady then I told her that we should get married then I said now God if it's you truly that you will attend my wedding and your angels I don't have time to go and run after but if it's you truly that you will attend my wedding Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's glorify Jesus. We thank God this evening to be here. This beautiful event of our daughter Seraphine. This is a great blessing. It is a great blessing of the Lord. God predestined and planned it. We as sons of men had no idea, but the Lord had predestined it. And we thank God for this beautiful venue. It's very nice. As you can see, it's a beautiful place. Amen. Amen. Maybe some of us had never been here, was it not for Seraphine? There's a lady who was with at church, and she said, I would want, like to come to convention center, and she's here, Foib. Foib, God has used Seraphim to bring you here for a bright. Our God is good. Let me thank Seraphim and his husband for allowing to take on the call of God. The call of God is not easy. It is a burden and it is difficult. So we thank God that you allowed the call of God. The second thing we thank God for is how you conduct yourself through the call of God. For you to acknowledge that we are of value in the call of God for your life. This is such a blessing. Sometimes you have children. They have their weddings. Sometimes they have them on their own without your acknowledgement. Those who have been in the village, it's like taking someone and they take them by force to get them married. Or the boy and the girl elope and marry each other. But the joy of a parent is to go and take their daughter and son and give them willingly. This is such a great blessing. Whenever your child allows you the honor of being part of their great wedding, you also give them dowry because they have allowed you to be part of that wedding. But if they don't give you the honor, 
ntumukosha you do not give them any dowry inkwano iva mu mutima w'umubyeyi any dowry comes from the depth of the heart of a parent ndetse ni utayifite even when you don't have enough umubyeyi urahaguruka ukaja kunshutiza as a parent you go to your friends kabwe ati umwana afite ubukwe and say my daughter my son has a wedding ariko simfite inkwano but my daughter has a wedding and i don't have dowry for her. my son you call the friends and family muri famiye bitashobwa kukaja kunshuti maybe in the family is not possible you call on your friends kani naso no umuntu agira kuko si ugusabiriza because you don't you don't have to be embarrassed about it because it's not to beg anyhow we kora no munezero ati umwana wanje agiye gukora ubukwe none ni mu ni mu nshumbushe mugira icyo mumba shingira umwana This is an act of honor so it's very okay for you to go to your family to your friends to ask them to be with you as you marry your son or daughter. Wono mugishutangaje. So it's always a great blessing. Amen. Amen. Ndashimira imana rero ko sera Serafine ya yageragaje ku kubimbwira inchuro nyinshi. So I think God that Serafine tried to convince me and speak to me about it. Mu byukuri ntabwo Serafine yari umwana wanje mu rusengero nk'abanda ariko yari afite abashumba bamurera bamureba cyane cyane muri intercession. Truly she was a Christian and a daughter part of our, the children the daughters in the house she had pastors overseeing our, what she was doing in the intercession ministry. Buryo bana mukurikiranye n'igicaniro yari afite they would follow up with her even the altar she had eh nje naje kubimenya nyuma i only got to know this later aho mbimenyeye when i got to know it eh noneho mbona message y'umuntu wakomeje nyandikira cyane ambwira ko afite umurimo w'Imana ariko yifuza ko twahuha umugisha I received a message and there were several of them from her as she was telling me about the work of God and she wanted me to bless it. Ikindi mushimira. What I thank her for ni teste cyangwa se ikigeragezo cy'igihe yatsinze. Is the test of time that she overcame. Navuga ko yatangiye kunyandikira hafi imyaka ibiri. I think she was writing to me for about two years. But I never responded a word. And then she would write again. I would be silent. She would write. I would be silent. One year went by. The second came. Why? We have people who do things out of haste cyangwa se akakora ibintu bitamurimo or they do things that they really don't mean ibiri mu muntu what's truly inside of you ubimenyeshwa n'igi it's tested with time batubwiye ngo kuza muri isale if they told us to come to this hall ngo twese that all of us condition kuza the condition to come ngo norugero For example, twesabagabo. All the men tube dufite uruhara. We need to be bold headed. Kugira ngo tuze muri isa. For us to be able to be admitted here. Ko tukaba tuzi ko harimo ibintu byiza. Yes, we know there is great stuff inside. No no abandi bamwe tutagira uruhara. But many of us who don't have a bold head, tukaja kuri ba kinyozi bakawukura hose. We go to the barber and they will shave our heads. For us to be bold headed enough to be admitted in the hall. It is difficult for the people who are supervising to see that everybody is truly having a bold head. But when we get in the hall the people inside will say we are closing this hall and you leave after a month after a week those who shave their heads to be bald their hair will start to grow 
And the bold headed will truly be known that they are bold headed. After a short while, we know the authentic and the who are fake. That is how it is in any calling. There are those who get excited about the calling and quickly shave their heads when they are not bold headed. A difficult thing, I was asking myself the biggest question was why does she want me to father her when many rejected me to be their father I said is she really authentic what's her motive not that I didn't want it oh, yeah. no I needed to know that it was genuine. Was she authentic? I was seated in Dallas, Texas. And then she wrote to me. And then a voice confirmed that I should respond to her message. That was about two years later. Then I responded to her. Her problem, she was so excited. She sent so many emojis. She was weeping. She was excited. I'm so happy the Lord has done this miracle finally. You know those kind of emojis that show excitement. I said, yes, it's good. I said, I'll be in Rwanda soon. We'll talk about it. When I got here, we sat and spoke to each other. The first thing she told me, she said, I'm with Denise. Denise is <laughs> The last time I knew Denise was part of my church, the one who just received me here, you also took Denise with you? But they are all my daughters. I said, Why didn't Denise at least tell me about you? That's the first thing she told me. She said, as we speak, I'm with Denise. So we had a conversation. What amazed me and what made me joyful. She said, you might just know me, but I want to tell you who I truly am. I I was raised at Pastor Sachindi. Sachindi yari ishuti yanji chani. Pastor Sachindi was such a great friend of mine. Ige naje murwanda. When I came to Rwanda, nje kuvuga ubutumwa muri Bugesera. I was to evangelize in Bugesera. Icyo giye Sachindi yari gashora. Pastor Sachindi was in Gashora. Na rurangirwa ari inyamata. And rurangirwa ari inyamata. Na Viani yari muri ngenda. And Viani in Jenda. Okay. So I would evangelize in all those areas. But the pastor Sachind, we connected because he was an intercessor. Even when I wanted to get married, we took time to pray together with him. Then he told me, I didn't have anything to do the wedding with. You, you didn't have anything to do the you know the weddings of those times when 
Christians don't have a single coin, but they feel it's time for them to get married. I'm not talking about what we have today. People have big budgets. They have all kinds of wishes. We had no money at the time. You, we didn't even have where to stay. We were staying in the uh, annexes of other people. I had such a life where I was serving God but only slept where the Lord would find, my, find myself in the night. I didn't really have a stable place to stay. So as we were praying with Sachindi, he said, do not worry. Wake up. God told me that the angels will do your wedding and they will attend your wedding. The word he told me it pierced my heart and I could feel the angels literally attending my wedding. Then I purposed okay. So now I need to go and propose to the lady. Then I told her that we should get married. Then I said, now God, if it's you truly, that you will attend my wedding and your angels. I don't have time to go and run after. So I was telling God, now God, you promise you'll attend this wedding if you're for me. I don't have time to date. I don't have time to go around begging her to marry me. I'll go straight, propose to her. And if indeed you have said that you'll be with me, let her say yes. And I needed her because she's the one who knew Rwanda better. And she's the one who helped me that she would type all the information and all the revelation the Lord would give me. She would type it on the computer. And if I told her that the Lord is leading me to Chivungo, she understood it and she would literally tell me what Chivungo looks like spiritually. Truly, she felt like just a friend at the time. When I felt convinced that she would be my wife, I said, now I can go to propose to her. If she decides to go around giving me a hard time, and then she says, yes, you took your time, you prayed, but I need to pray as well, I will forget her. I don't have time to beg because I'm too busy doing the work of God, evangelizing, praying. I didn't have time to chase a girl. So I was saying, allow me and please don't be offended. Yes, if you uh, have given a hard time to a man or you're okay being given a hard time, that's okay. But that was me. For me, I felt that way. Mm. We were raised as children in a Christian home. We had no idea how you actually date a young girl, tell her you love her. It was just living as brothers and sisters. It's as especially if you're raised as a Pentecostal you are told not to look at a girl because if you look you're already lasting and sinning just like the Christian man when he reached in the noisy market he said I'll close my eyes just in case I sin <laughs> 
little back there is a Congolese lady I was a student and this lady came for prayer the mother was sick I, I had a voice tell me, get water, pray for it, give it to her to go, give it to the mother. The mother was bedridden at home. So this lady understood. She took the bus. She had a glass of water. Be careful, don't pour this water. Imagine taking a bus from here to Nyabujingo. You have a glass. Make sure not a drop falls out of the glass. So she took the glass. The mother was badly off. She said, Mother, wake up and take your medicine. The mother awoke, tried to wake up. She was weak. She drank the water. When she was about to drink, she said to sweat. She was empowered in her body. She hadn't woken up for weeks. She wasn't able to eat. She sat down. She said, my daughter, who is the doctor that did this? He said, the doctor staying somewhere. Where is he? Where does such a doctor live? So the girl knew. The mother got well. He said, I would like to see him. When the girl came, she came to tell me the testimony of what the Lord has done. She hugged me and held me tight. She hugged me so much, I felt that I had fallen, had sinned because she held me too much. So she is here embracing me so much and saying, I love you, I love you so much. I felt that I was being tempted and I was falling into sin. Truly, she meant what she was saying, but it was not the other way I was thinking. But you know, the fear, the Pentecostal fear. She was not very tall. So she was short and she was literally just hugging my belly and you can imagine how that felt. And then she would look up to me because I was up there and she said, I love you. Uh, so the Pentecostal spirit can really be misleading if you do not mentor your children. Normally, we should train or mentor our children on how they caught with their fiancés. So many times they make mistakes because we don't take it uh, intention on train them. So I went to see her. And then I, to I told her, I've come to propose and to request you to agree to be my wife. She looked at me and said, I agree. Yes, I'll be your wife. That's the sign I needed from God. She was also going through trials at the time. So at the time, she was going through trials and uh, temptations at the time. She had men, several men, wealthy, with Land Rovers parking at her house. So anytime I would go to visit, 
Remember, I'm traveling from Kachiru all the way to Nyabujingo. The most I could take her is a suite, and I find these wealthy men all looking for her. <laughs> and then I buy her biscuits sometimes. <laughs> She needs to thank me. I bought her so many biscuits at the time. Do you hear that? That is the life someone goes through. So I was talking about Sachindi. So when he told me that, I received that word. And I called him Sachindi. I'm about to get married. He said, I'm poor right now. But we have God. For him, he was married. And that's where Seraphine was. She was young. He had many children at his home. They were all very young. A Pentecostal uh, pastor from the village. I think he had come from Chirundo in Burundi. So we used to pray together a lot. And God did it. Then she said, I know you. When I came to Kigali, said, I know you. When I came to Kigali, said, I came to Kigali specifically following you and to Zion because I knew you from the time you were friends with Sachindi. They are Pentecostal uh, a family. She would have joined any church when she got here. So she said, uh, I normally would sit in the back, but now I need you to bless me because I see you as my father in the place of Sachindi. So when she said that, that she knew, she knew Sachindi, I looked at her. I said, she really touched a place. That was very wise of her. She touched a place dear to my heart when she mentioned Sachin. So I started to ask about Sachin. He has passed on. Where is he? He said where the children are. And I felt that I was longing for those good times. So we had a, good, a conversation. I was greatly delighted that she had really been patient. And she was told much about me. A lot. to the point that you ignore all that and you still want them to father you I, I realized she had such godly wisdom in her so my daughter Seraphine you will reach very far very far I say very far. You knew the right way. Any great person, they have someone who has made them great. Many servants of God and pastors here. Doesn't that yeah. offend you? You see a Christian that you mentored in the church, and all of a sudden they started a church, they are on TV without your knowledge. 
ariko naye ngo birakunezeza iya kwegera akagubwira ngo mubyeyi mfite umuhamagaro kandi ndashaka kujya gukora On the contrary you are delighted when they come to you and say father mother I have a calling can you bless me so I can pursue it Nta mubyeyi wese ufa kwemera There is no parent who freely easily agree kuberiki why nubwenge it's wisdom iyo mukobwa kubwe ngo nabonye umuhungu umuhungu mbere na mbere ubanza kwanga umukwe siko bigenda nta ufa kwemera umukwe ngo abona abahe bavuye he mwana wa ariko suko bo wanze umukwe uburi mu protege umwana wawe azagwa ahantu heza azagwa hashashe niko bigenda nta bukwe budakubitwa ishoka The first time your daughter will come to you and say I have a fiance you will not easily say oh that's great no you want to know first who are they where are they from because you have a heart to protect them from trouble Niyo mpamva bashumba kenshi That is why pastors many Niyo times Niyo mpamva ufite umuhamagaro abanza kuduta gatoya ejo bitazakunanira you so that they first check if you will not be defeated along the way Iyo utabizi ugira ngo barakurwanya So if you do not understand the process you think they do not want you to be But a true servant of God is a father a mother Ukufuza kwa bana bacu batagumirwa bava mu nzu bakashingirwa bakarongora ni nako pastor ukuri yumva bana be bafite ministeri yabashigikira Donc a true The way a parent does not want the daughter or son to stay home and take too long before getting married is the same that the father your spiritual father or mother do not want you to stay even when you have the call of God upon your life so they will bless you So that time of testing That is when we know the truth who is authentically called and who is not Uyu munsi ugiye kugera mu rundi rwego. Today you're being elevated to another level. Urabona aha haje abakristo benshi. There are many Christians here. Harabo mwatangiranye. Some of them you began with them. Others will join you. Nazanye nabashumba bwe. I have with I have come with many pastors from Many of your uh, pastors from Zion and Christians your fellow Christians are here what brought them is to support you that is why they came even those who did, doubted your calling they will confirm it today and believe in it they are trials and battles you not face anymore. that people will, people will not doubt that you are called again the battle you will encounter is the normal battles we go through it is the battles that come with the anointing when the anointing starts to work They will align you to working with the dark the spirit of darkness they will align you to working with evil powers but that is no more and you will overcome them But those are not the true battles The greatest battle you will have is not satan mm -hmm. no because satan is powerless Ni ntambara yo kugira umwanya munini mu kazi ukabura umwanya w'Imana The biggest battle you will go through or try you will go through is spending so much time in the ministry and you don't have time for your God Iyo niyo ntambara turwana That is the biggest battle we encounter Now we are daimoni makuru biri bya nacyo bivuze ufa kuba gusowe n'Imana mugirana ubusaba ibindi ni zero The battles of fighting demons and all the people that are fighting against you those are very trivial. The biggest battle you'll have and what is important is your communion with your God. You reach a place my daughter. Usengera abana mu mwuka. Where you pray for your spiritual children. Ejo ba abana bavuge ngo Then the same children you have prayed for say we reject that anointing because it's from Satan they reject you in other words I have felt what I'm saying 
But it doesn't matter. Why? Be, Be it the anointing they call from Satan or truly the right anointing, they are called pastors because I prayed for them. Do not waste your time on that. The greatest battle is the one that will hinder your communion with your God. And it normally comes in the name, in the name of mercy and love and you feel like you want to solve the problems of the world everyone is pulling you left and right to solve their problems and you do not pray to your God and commune with him this is a great battle that requires great wisdom it takes captive, it takes you captive under the, the guise of the principles of God through love, wanting to give mercy. Those are the battles you should worry about and fight against. Do not worry about slander, people talking mm -mm. bad of you. No. Jesus was the first one to be called Beelzebul, but he was against Beelzebul. They said he's full of demons and he would cast out demons from them. So one battle he had, which he overcame, he would spend his time with the multitude but go in solitude with the Lord in the night. He would be tired but he would tell the disciples you go I will come shortly and then he will be in solitude with the Lord if Jesus who was God who was born as God had to serve the Lord did that how much more you who is human those are the greatest battles you should worry about anything that would disconnect you with the head of the church Christ is the head of the church when you no longer have his mindset Satan has overcome when does he overcome when you overcome is when the branch and the tree are connected always pastors here servants of God Christians here that is the prayer you need to pray for us that is why we ask you to give us pray for us that in the great burdens of the ministry we should always have time for God That is always the difficult one. So yes, you're getting into the anointing. The Lord will elevate you truly and will support you. Amen. We will support you. We will support you. And God will bless you too. Let's go to 1 Samuel 16, 1. Samuel 16, verse 1. Samuel 16, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? 
fill your horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. Amen. Amen. Psalm 78, 70 to 72. Psalm 78 from verse 70 to 72. Do you have it? 70. He also chose David his servant, took him from the sheep folds. Kandi imukura kugukuri kiri ntamazo kugira ngo aragire aba Yakobo ubwo ko bwayo abisiraeli umwandu wayo from following the uh, the owls had young that had young he brought him to shepherd Jacob's people on Israel his inheritance 72 ngo nuko agirate abaragirishiki umuti mutunganye ikinda bayobozi ki so he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guarded them by the skillfulness of his hands. Amen. 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 God told Samuel, How long will you wait for Saul? And I've rejected him as king of Israel. Arise right now. I command you, arise. Fill your horn with oil. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite. Among his sons, I have found a king. Samuel took the prophetic horn which we'll use shortly he filled it with oil and he went to Bethlehem he was living in Ramah across in the hills he was uh, in the hills past Jerusalem so he went he went to Bethlehem to seek among the sons of Jesse who will be anointed to be the king of Israel. So the Bible told us in Psalm 79 he also chose David his servant before David became a shepherd of sheep, he first became a servant of God. No, it doesn't say that he was the shepherd of sheep. But God chose him as a true servant. Because God sees the heart, not the outward appearance. He will see the calling and then gives the heart to it. It means the heart is to your calling. When you have a great and big heart, God will give you a great calling. When you have a mean heart, your calling will be small. So God called him. Where did he get him from? He took him from the ship forward. He was from the University of Politics. No, not from there. Not from great homes of men who had been. Or not from the Benjamites. Where Saul comes from. No. God did not get him from prominent families in Israel. Oh, yeah. No. God did not get him from priests' households. 
There was nothing like a priesthood in Judah's house. God did not get him from the Reubenites. They were the firstborns that would have taken over kingship. God did not get him from Simeon. The, do, the son of Leah, and he was allowed. And God did not get him from Joseph, where he was the son of Rachel, and she was loved by Jacob. But God loved David because of the heart he had for people and for the sheep. A loving heart is optimized by God so that he will use it to do great things. He took him from the sheepfold where he would run after the owls and the younger ones where he, that's where he was called from. So that what would happen? So he will shepherd the sons of Jacob, his people. The, the Israelites, his inheritance. These are great words. The sons of Jacob his people, the Israelites, his inheritance. Israel is God's inheritance. They are the people of God. Israel, Israel they are also his inheritance. They are God's inheritance. So who does God entrust his altar to lead his people, his beloved people? Even the Christians the Lord has given us to shepherd, you are pastors here, you don't just get anybody to come and onto your pulpit to preach to your uh, Christians. Because sometimes you have a good jealous. And then you wonder, what if they mislead my flock? So it is important that you know who you're giving the pulpit to preach to your flock. So God himself is in heaven. Israel this is the great plan of God. When Adam sinned God sought for which lineage he would be born. If people have rejected me and I created them and I'm God in my divinity let me let me go, take on the flesh and dwell with men. And I get born among them. And I be their relative. They have failed to know who I am as God afar. Let me be among them as man. Among them. They have failed to come out of their their, humanity. Be, their humanity to understand my divinity. Let me come out of my divinity and become a man. That is the strategy God used. So in his divinity, in his godliness, they don't understand me. So let me give them a second chance. Now in their humanity, let me allow that they understand me as God. When we stand in the air, in our divinity, they will never understand. Let's go down and be born among them. That is the plan we have. 
and was executed. So heaven sought. Okay. So, where are we going to be born? We need to be born in an earthly family. So there were many families being born. This is in Genesis chapter 5. They would speak, there is a, a lineage of genealogies and many a times they would say, this one begat, this one, this one begat, this, and they would always pull out one person to follow their lineage. Vaseti. Seth. Methuselah. Methuselah. Yeredi. Jared, Lamech, Lamech Noah, Noah. Yes, they had other brothers. Just like in your family, you have many brothers and sisters, but they insist on one. So the genealogy you see in the Bible. Every time they would reject many and speak of one and they follow their lineage and they dwell on that one. So the plan of God it came all the way to Noah from Noah he went to Shem from Shem he went to Abraham from Abraham to Isaac then Isaac had twins and God had to choose between the twins and then he was trying to do and then he fell on Jacob I reject Esau. He said, I rejected Esau and I chose Jacob. It's not literally to reject that God hated Esau. No, it is a biblical term to say, I chose this over the other. I'm a choice is mesh. When you're choosing an equation, when you're doing a decision, making a decision, and you are doing an equation and you need to choose, you reject some and you follow one until you get the answer. What are you I left all the books and I chose the Bible. Yeah. Everyone makes a choice. God chose Jacob. Normally, Jacob was not was a swindler, a con man. The choice of God is always amazing. It's not because we are always the best that He chooses us, but you are chosen because just God chose you. Among all the women, God has chosen Seraphine today, and we're here because of her. Don't think she's perfect and that's why she's chosen. The day you meet her angry. And the day you meet me angry. I know you have met me several times. Sometimes I can roll but I'm a toothless lion. I have so much compassion. Anyway, I don't want to blow my trumpet, but I'm sure you will test me and know that I am compassionate. Anyway, so he chose Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. God said, and I have found a people. God all that time was seeking for where Jesus would be born. But for him to be born in that family, he, inheritance. so he, he told the people he has called his inheritance among the families on the earth. He chose Jacob's family and rejected the others. Those in Rwanda, in Tanzania, those in America. And he went to Israel 
said, this is the family. They had not even taken on their Africa. land. They were living in Africa. And he took them out. I'll give you a nation. He told Moses, I want you to train and he told Moses, I would like you to train these people and to be taught because I have chosen them among many nations to be my people. So God came down himself and he wrote the Ten Commandments. Go give them to them. Let them read them and follow them. Because I want to be their God and lead them. I have a purpose for them. And he told them not to do many things. When they eat such kind of meat, do not eat it. Eat this kind. Anything that had clothes. Don't care. Woof. The, the, one, the animals that were had hooves. Like, like a cow has hooves. You may eat such meat, but the dogs that have got clothes do not eat such animals. Why? Because he was telling them the kind of meat that would defile them and that, would, that wouldn't defile them because he wanted them to live healthy and long. Do not eat the swine because they have so many microbes they're very dirty do not eat dogs they have microbes and even the birds do not eat the ravens because they eat other people's meat just eat insect and fruit eating birds and he would, con he would instruct them on what to do God was protecting them. So out of them would be birth the purpose of God. When they go to Israel, he gave them a nation and then he would overcome their enemies. Where the others fight, he would just say, just blow the trumpet. When they blow the trumpet and then the walls would fall. Say, what kind of people are these? God fought on their behalf so that they will not lose many. One time they lost three people. Just 36. 36. Only those two. And Joshua wept through the night. Because they're not used to losing people. God said, stand up, why are you crying? All these people have died. So he found that the, God told him that someone has sinned and that is why many have died as a result of Jacob who had stolen something in his bag. Briefly, uh, Joshua arose and they overcame. God gave them the land. There were other people living there. They became their slaves. God said, I'll still be your king. A heavenly dainty needs to be born and they need to be born in a good place. Saul so Saul came. Two years only. He was doing what was right, wasn't right. God said, this is war unto me. Someone who's not disobedient, how is he going to lead my people? How is he going to lead my inheritance? 
I'm jealous for them. I give them rain in the right time. And the sun at the right time. I cover them and comfort them. I protected them from having buried women. And they have their their fruit, their gardens are fruitful. Now this King Saul, if he doesn't obey me, they will not find the rain in its right time. They will not eat. They will get the plague. They will encounter calamities. This will be bad. So I reject him. God told Samuel, I have rejected Saul as king. And Saul, Samuel wept. How do you reject him already? Because Saul was handsome. All the men in the land reached his shoulders. He was a handsome man. Great stature. When he would walk, you would indeed say he's a king. There are people who fit their positions. Imagine if some they would give you a king and they are short as you can see. You can't, you're literally looking down on them. You will be praying, God, let them be a bit taller because there is a stature that goes with kingship. And a queen has great stature. She's beautiful. She looks amazing. And if you find a queen who's a dwarf, you would indeed reject her as queen. So Samuel felt bad and wept. What hurt him again, you told him he would be king. Now people who think I'm a false prophet, I called and gathered the world and I said God chose him as king. Now you're rejecting him. How will I go to people and say God has reversed what he said? That was a big problem for him. In other words, try and convince him so that we'll continue. God said no. I rejected him. Why are you rejecting him, God? Do not worry. There is a young man I discovered. That one. He's not from the hills of Ephraim. Of Benjamin. He's from Bethlehem. Really? from the sons of Jesse. What's beautiful about prophets, their prophecy is according to scripture. When he went to the scriptures, he saw in Genesis 49, in verse 9 and 10, he said, Oh Judah, you're like a lion that is with its carbs and the staff of kingship will not depart from you that your brothers will bow to you and that staff will be upon you until the owner will take it Selah Selah okay it means that kingship is in Judah's house. He filled the horn with oil. God said that I have, I have found a man who shepherd my people. My inheritance. In other words, I'll take a little rest because his heart will do my will. I will also rest. When you have someone who helps you to do things and they do them diligently, you find rest in your work and you do other things. May the Lord enable you to get people to support you and to do what you desire. Not the ones that I burden. No the ones that will support you. 
There is something people don't know in the ministry. Because when you are God will always give you people to support you, not people to challenge you. You have enough challenges as it is in your ministry, in your family. He will always seek to give you people to support you. Mm-hmm. When the pastor says something and you don't agree with him or her, mm-hmm. So if your pastor says something and you feel that you do not agree with it, don't go slandering and backbiting and say, I don't believe what the pastor was saying. No, rather go to your pastor and say, something didn't go right. I don't believe what you said. Can we clear it up? Don't go around them. We are not God. There are things we may say that are not true. But you need to come to us just like Akira and Prisca did. Apollos taught after teaching everybody was clapping he was different from Paul Paul was not a sharp and eloquent man but Apollos he was from Egypt he was born in Alexandria he was was very clear and precise he was the greatest uh, library and it, there were Arazeke people who were literate. So he came to the Greeks. Paul, Paul had just left. And he was very ah. clear. Arafuga, arafuga, arafuga. He spoke very eloquently and he knew what he was saying. Did you hear him? He knows what he's saying. He is eloquent. Others said no. But Paul was the one who began teaching us. And others said, I rather have Kefir. No, me, I prefer Peter. Peter is the one who stayed with the key to the church. And the other one, we are just Christians. Paul, Apollos, Kepha, we're just Christians. But he had told there was a couple they invited to share a meal with him. They never invited other people. They sat with him and then they made him to repeat. He knew very well the Old Testament but he never understood the journey of the Lord Jesus and how he would connect them. So they sat with him. So they started connecting the the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now what you are saying, all the riches that were in the tabernacle, they meant Jesus. Really? That's true. And it was done in private. They never slandered him that he never understood. Mm-hmm. Your pastor Yes. Your pastor may, may, may be misled by accident. He will say, this scripture is in, Ma- in Matthew instead of Mark. Instead of saying, oh, this person doesn't even know what they're saying. Go on the side, speak to them and tell them you made a mistake. The scripture is in Mark, not in Matthew. <laughs> We are not here to lead over you because we are any greater. No, we are people like you, but God has set us apart to shepherd his flock. A pastor may make a mistake, but the one who was called by God will not do it intentionally. They will do it by error. So God will not punish you for being in error. He will punish the motive behind what you did. Whatever is behind what you're doing. 
you may decide, make a decision. And you feel that this is the Lord's will. And maybe it's not a good decision. And God will not punish you. Because you thought that God will put people where he desires. Why we are here as pastors is to come close to come to the pastor that yes, this decision is good but if we try some, something else it would be better in love and in humility. Yes. There are some who are sitting all puffed up like bread with yeast. They are all blown up and angry. And they time when you face them and they show you they are truly not agreeing with you. So that they bother you even as you're in front, they will focus and show you they don't agree. Many of you are sitting here. We can see all of you and your gestures are saying different things. Your body language say different things to us. So there is a pastor in Congo. They will literally just swear to you and say, go to your mother, get out of my church. I am here, I'm in front of you as your pastor and you're looking at me like that, get out. You look on one side, one person is mocking you. You look on the other, the one looks disappointed. So you decide, for me not to get distracted, I'll just look ahead. Sometimes you train yourself to preach, you look at somebody, but you don't really recognize what they're doing. When you're beginning to preach, you're looking, you are looking, you are looking, when you're just beginning to preach, you're looking for recognition. Please say amen to what I'm saying, but you are not yet there, and you learn better. When you preach while looking for people to acknowledge you, you are learning. The experienced preacher will preach although looking at you, but they are looking above you. You may fall if you concentrate on what's going on in the audience. There is one you will look at and they really show you that you don't even know what you're doing. You have, you have, and you always not, try not to be distracted and ask what's going on and why you're not doing the sign that you're doing. You have to concentrate and just pray to the Lord to help you. But it's not every one of you. Mm -hmm. Not everyone will be mocking you. Not everyone will be against you. There are others that the Spirit will excite and they say, speak, man of God. God teaches us to work in the Spirit, not through emotions. <laughs> David, God called him to shepherd his people. The most difficult people to shepherd are the people of God. The people of God, they have no prison, you can take them. Because if we had a prison on the side of the podium where we take you, in case you misbehave, maybe. The people of God, there is no prison. 
God among his people, he even brought people who lose their mind. They are crazy. He said, even those crazy, that crazy person is my child. They bring people who are angry. They are shrewd. They don't smile Monday to Sunday. When you're going to embrace them like others, they give, them, give you a handshake. And they don't even, they are chewing their teeth. And God said, he is my sheep, shepherd him. Another sheep comes. I'm the one uh, leading today. But I will not lead. I just fought and had a fight with my husband and wife. God will tell you, please pray over them. Even if they are angry, they still have to lead because you as a pastor can't do everything. When they get to the pulpit, they are bringing their anger on to everyone. This work, shepherding the people of God, it is easier to lead the people of Satan. Why? You know in their heads they are already messed up anyway. But the people of God, you think they are all gentle and angelic. When they send you to foxes, you know the behavior of a fox. You expect their behavior and you get ready for it. When they send you to sheep, you think they are sheep, but actually not. Jeremiah told God that you lied to me. That I shepherd such people, you lied to me. Really? God said, go tell them. The day I told you that I will strengthen your forehead as metal, as bronze, is not because I was joking. I meant they will reject you, but you need to be strong. I love you. When the Christians are in their promises, you have given us the power to uproot and to plant. Do you know what approves? Caterpillar. It's a caterpillar. You have. What? What is that? A caterpillar, you understand, something that approves, literally a tree planted that you need to produce a lot of energy. You just say those promises you see in the Bible, but understand and contextualize them, understand the truth behind them, and don't just be excited. I'll strengthen your forehead like bronze. And you feel it's a great <laughs> promise. They will they will box you, reject you, but the Lord will protect your born. Shepherding the people of God is the hardest thing. The most humble man on the earth was refused to enter Canaan. Moses. Moses. I am the most humble of all on the earth. But God told him, you want to enter Canaan. Why? God had had a deal with Moses. Moses had wept and prayed that God will forgive the obstinate Israelites. And he had said, I had told you as God, we need to destroy these people. I'll give you a new generation that is obedient to God. You insisted, and this is exactly what they did. They made you disobey. God told him, I will bury you myself. I will kill you myself. 
Imagine this man's righteousness. There is no ordinary disease that killed no. him. No. Moses was a man of integrity. Moses was a man of integrity. He was pure at heart to the point that death could not penetrate him. Because death comes as a result of sin. God said, okay, I'll kill you myself. He looked at Canaan all these people that I have sacrificed myself for have kept me from entering there. He was waiting, expectant with others for the day that Jesus would come in the body that he would call him Moses only got to Canaan on the Mount of Transfiguration. That's the only time he got to Canaan. God was preparing a people which were obstinate. I'm not saying you are difficult. You are good people. And if you're difficult, it's normal. We are used to it. When you are called a child of God, there is always battles. Shepherd my people and uh, shepherd my people and shepherd my, my inheritance. <sighs> Tells Moses, you took us from Egypt to die from here. <inaudible> Give us water. <inaudible> right now, we need water. <inaudible> but we have been, all of us are in the same <inaudible> place. <inaudible> we are in the wilderness. <inaudible> Where am I getting this water from? <inaudible> you have to give us water. <inaudible> you have to figure it out. Moses went before God. He said, they need, your people need water. God told him, why are you angry anyway? They're asking me for water and I don't have it. So did you ask me for it? Give it to them. They are my people. Go and speak to the rock to bring out water call all of them to gather around and command the rock. That day, however, he was very angry. Why are these people merciless? We have been in this together. We who are, ma who are married, we know a lot. In Africa, especially. You spend the night, you all know you went to bed without money, but in the morning, your spouse is searching for money in your jacket. What are you doing in my jacket? I'm looking for something. As though in the we night, we we anyway, <laughs> Although in the night, you went to get a night job and now you have money all of a sudden. Has that happened to you? Because it's common. Adam, we are Woman, what is going on? What are you looking for? The children have to eat, you know that. We don't have charcoal to cook. Also, there is no bread and milk. You are in the same bed, you understand each other's situation. When you want to put a blanket, puts it off and says, we still don't have bread. When you refuse to do anything, they will go to your jacket and they start opening the pockets to check for money. That is the kind of people we lead. <laughs> So Moses gathered them together. He took his staff. He was angry. God told him to speak to the rock. And I will glorify myself. Give us water. We need water. 
So they gathered around. He took his stuff. He hit the rock and said, out of this rock, water will come out. And the water gushed out. Their anger anger subsided. Their anger subsided and they were now excited. They all came for the water. Now you're just playing around. And at night, you almost killed me. Then he said, Moses, when they are done drinking, we meet in the tabernacle. So he went. Why didn't you glorify me before the multitude? I said, speak to the rock. But you hit the rock in anger. Why were you angry for my people? From today, you will never enter Canaan. I beg you, (laughs) help us as your shepherds, as your pastors and servants of God, that we will enter with you in Canaan. Do not make us angry to the point that we will be hindered from entering. He found David behind the ship taking care of sheep doesn't have too many problems. When the cows are used to you, you just blow a whistle and they will hear the whistle. Cows Cows the cows will listen to the whistle of the keep the cattle keeper and they will follow the sheep the same and that is why Jesus said we are his sheep but unfortunately not all of us are sheep a cow there are cows which kill they fight and they can kill you but when you are the shepherd it will come down when it sees you and then it will acknowledge your presence and it will come towards you. Why? My master is here. That's why Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. He didn't say for the gods. He said for the sheep. David was used to the sheep. So giving him the people of Israel was a big punishment. And they are my people and my inheritance. That's what the Bible says. And then he led them according to a heart of integrity. A heart of integrity. He had a heart of a shepherd. So, in other words, to be a shepherd is not a title. It is the heart. In his heart, he was a shepherd. Being a shepherd is not to show off. It is the nature of the heart. I know you love us. Sometimes you carry us, you're excited. Carry us and get excited about us, but also remind us that we need to be humble. Mm. Amen. So when you always exalt us and you make us angelic, it is difficult because then you try to make us build a tower of Babel. The Lord will be uh, inquisitive. Come and find out why is that tower built and we will be punished for that. Remind us to be humble every time. Yes, a shepherd re- deserves double honor. That's what the Bible says. But that honor should not always make them forget that they are still on the earth. Why? Because the people we shepherd are for God, not ours. 
Mm. What will show the power of a shepherd or a pastor is the ability for them to still preach to someone who slandered you. And you still bless them. They will slander you and they say, Father, bless me, please. There are others say, what? You want my blessing? Then you will say, you want me to bless you? I'll never bless you. You'll never be blessed anywhere in my family. No. As a pastor, you have to bless them. That's the heart. The heart of a shepherd is offended. But the Holy Spirit will heal it. Because of the benefit of the many. Because of the benefit of many. I went to preach in Nyabujingo some time back. A pastor called me. There was a great conference. And sat me in the room. And he said the theme for this week. Is that the joy of a camel is his kick. It was the first time I had such a theme. And this, this was a seven-day conference and it was the last day. So he had been preaching about this theme that the joy of a camel is his great kick. And I told him, how did you receive such a revelation? He said, it's not a revelation, it's these people, they are stubborn. Servant of God, I'll pray for them, but they still slander me. I pray for them. God will bless them with money. But I go hungry. And they are offering and giving. And they, they get blessed when I pray for them. They go give testimonies in other churches. And he's speaking to me about this. We are together in the room. Teach. Teach them how someone is ungrateful in life and they encounter curses. I said, what is the theme scripture? It is a scripture <laughs> where the fig was cast by Jesus in the Bible. Don't you know that the disciples went, they were looking for fruit, there was no fruit, and then Jesus cut the fig tree? That is the same scripture we are going by. I said, okay. I'm under your invitation. We went, we went inside. He had come from Bukavu with lots of Swahili. We went inside. He took time to thank and appreciate me. And then he said, the joy of, of a camel is a great kick. The congregation was excited and repeating that. The entire week, they repeated that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. They kept repeating that theme that the joy of a camel is its great kick. I said, what kind of theme and how do I manage it? So, yes, I preached according to it. I said, the first donkeys is not Christians are the pastors who are called. And they went aside from the calling of God. So I went to the servants of God. I reached there. When I was talking about pastors, one of the men, one of the, one of the men said, Father, or oh, servant of God, we have suffered, we have suffered. Please speak to him. We have suffered. So they were. <laughs> so the pastor looked at him with an eye, in other words, to say, I will see you when he's gone. That is a person that's wounded. 
Pray for us. For God to heal our wounds. So we can minister to you better. Because preaching over a, a, a wound, it will not benefit you. That is why we need to be encouraged. In love. For God to raise a person like David among you. But then they are filled with so much heart. It's because there are people who are, he has not found people to support him. When they encouraged him, he would be healed and bless more people. Because the blessing of a pastor is the blessing of the sheep. Amen. Amen. May God give us a shepherd heart. And he used the skillfulness of his hand to lead them. The skillfulness of his hands. He had a heart. But he had skill in his hand. Every time when a Christian comes to you, you don't just end with a prayer. You show them the right way they should go. Do this. Pass here. And walk over here. When I came here, I came here after receiving a couple in my office. They came to tell me that life is too difficult for them. They have too much debt. They are about to take their house. Now, so we want to go to another country, the neighboring country. We're going to figure life there. We never have tuition for the children. The husband, the wife, all of them are jobless. This is a big problem. So in my pocket, I had 10,000. I said, I give it to them. But it will not solve all their problems. But it's okay. So, I gave it to the wife. They had two children. You can see they are hungry. Go buy them something to eat. Then I said, God, I have a heart, but give me a thought and an idea. I heard a voice tell me, ask the man what kind of project he has. That project is the one where the Lord will give them a solution. So I told the man, what kind of project do you have? He said, Father, it's always stuck in papers. Tell me about it. When he told me about the project, it was a good project. I say, I asked him, what do you need to execute it? A little capital. How much? He told me how much capital. Now that money, if you got it, would you do it? He said, why would I run away? Because God would have answered me. So I told him, you go and relax. The Lord is giving you that capital. The man I saw this man look excited as though now he understands what to do. The, man, the woman wept. When a Christian comes to you, you may not have a solution right there. But if you have the heart, God gives you wisdom and knowledge to lead them in the right way so that he will encounter his solution because the solution is by their side. David had two things. A heart of integrity. A heart that loved God. A heart of integrity. And the skillfulness of the hands. In the time of David, there was so much peace. Israel was at its peak. 
It started to decline in the time of Solomon. But in the time of David, all the ministries were successful. Be it the religious ministry, those singing 24 hours, the tent of God had been established, the foreign affairs ministry, they lived with different kings like Idon, in Hiram, in Moab, in Moab, in Aram, he was great at diplomacy to the point that all the kings were his friends. This is the agriculture ministry. Israel was fruitful and they had more to store. They were living in comfort that everyone in the time of David went home to his tent. But in the time of war, everyone would hide in their If you read the Bible, in the time of David, everyone went home to their tent. Things were good because of a heart of integrity. I pray for you, Church of Rehoboth. Today we are coming to ask for the heart of integrity, Lord, for that skillful hand to lead the Church of God. May God do great things to you. To use your pastor greatly and mighty exploits. We will support him, her. We will not control everything no. she does, but we will support her. We are not here to take care of everything she's doing. She's a spiritual daughter. Give us a report. How much did you get? What are you doing with your no. ministry? No. Even in Gatenga, Zion, I don't know how much money comes in and goes out. It's not my business. My job is to evangelize. That's my job. The, the other parishes of Zion, I don't ask for financial reports. I don't know them. All I do is shepherd them. Don't say apostle has come. Now he's going to control everything we do. He's going to ask no, how no, much no, no. we get. No. We have 135 parishes of Zion. It's already too much headache for me. Now I need to control 135 parishes. I can't do it. But we came to support this ministry. Do not fear. Do not worry. Oh, yeah. No. This is my daughter that I have come to wed and have given her. I'm opening for her a great door of blessings. No one will despise her womanhood. He, yes, she will work with men. She is going to shepherd the people of God. In the mandate we are given, we need to support the people that will shepherd his people. Also, to tell her that leave this and come back to Gatenga, I would not be despising or no. it would be a bad thing not to her. Why? There are many who get saved not through Gatenga Church. But they will be born again from Rehoboth. Those are the ones that I'm hindering. That is what happens. There are people who believe in her that they don't believe in me. But today, they are going to believe me because she believes in me. They don't have a choice. Because she believes in me, she's approving of me, now you have to approve of me. And I'm blessing God for that. Because you're being forced to love me through her. However, you would never maybe get a chance to be born again if it was me, but you were born again because of her. There are others still getting born again. If they hear that today Zion Temple came 
you get ready. Many will come to you. Why? I don't like to you. We have an anointing of a mega church of pulling many to Christ. I'm not boasting about it. It's the God's call for us. I knew about the mega church anointing in Australia in 2001. I was evangelizing with three white men. One of them, he evangelized and I was frightened. He was in Berber. He seemed like a Chinese. He evangelized and preached. And the entire church was shaken. It was a great conference. Now, my day was the next day. I tell you truly. I was weeping through the night. He said, how do I preach tomorrow? There are three men that just finished that had great English. Winnie Lewis. Winnie Lewis. Winnie Lewis. Winnie Lewis. He, he's, um, he, he started the Pentecostal churches, Elim churches in the UK. He would speak jokes and I hardly understood what he meant. He knew the Bible. Everything he would quote the Bible and I would be amazed. Now the next day, another man came. Now that was even worse. He has five PhDs. He showed yeah, yeah, his biography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he um, showed like that he was Chinese. When he spoke, I said, now you want to embarrass me there. I don't know what to say. Now, what was more scary, when we would finish the conference, and then everyone would say, we are waiting expectantly for you tomorrow. So in the night I said, maybe I should be sick and tell them that I had some food poisoning. Satan was lying to me. He said, now you tell the host all enough that they replace you with someone, someone else <laughs> because you have a stomach upset and indeed my stomach would feel funny. I said, Satan is a liar. And then I would feel literally upset and I, I thought confirming what I was feeling. I looked for the message. I couldn't find it. In the evening, it was my day. I still didn't know what to preach. I felt like I lost my mind. He said, Paul Jitwaza. I said, so before they introduced me, they passed the documentary. I think Pastor Didier is the one who did it. I didn't even know what was in. And every time I saw what they're talking about me, I'm a pastor from Africa, I would even be more scared because I felt them being expectant. So I came to the front. I saw the church was full. There were only two black people sitting in the back. But they were Nigerians coming to start Redeem Church in Australia. This is 2001. They stood up and cheered at me. And I saw them, they were like Nigerians. Nigerians know scriptures so well. Now, remember I was francophone. I know the Bible better in French. I don't really master it in English. And when you want to explain it in English, you make mistakes. 
ngo nifatire abazungu bonye bari yabavuye heka donc nabyo kimbere kindi kibazo sinabonamo encourage I wasn't even encouraged because I knew the Nigerians they know the scriptures very well so I was already discouraged that they would not even be of help now for them they were fear they didn't sit they continued to stand they were excited to see me I wish you could be in my position that day. I thank God that he manages to save you from an embarrassing situation. They had given me 45 minutes but it felt like 5 days. So I stood. I first smiled at them. I looked at a lady I first smiled so that I could take away the stress from them. Ah, you look beautiful. And then they said, you look beautiful. They, there are people come, who are coming from the island of Tonga. They are aborigines. They had come from Africa. They originated from Africa. And so in my in my small documentary I showed that I come from Rwanda which is near Tanganyika and they said that their forefathers used to come from Tanganyika so they were excited about it they, they also stood up they were excited in the congregation I said now this is even getting worse so I started singing Amen. So, so as I sang that song, and believe you me, it was in French. I sang the song, but the man on the keyboard, or the young man on the keyboard, could not stand the song. He didn't know it. An old lady who remembered the revival in the early times of Australia stood up and came to do it. And then, so this yeah. woman played the piano. I love the piano sound. Mm -hmm. I was in another atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand where I was. I went in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm. So I sang that song and everybody went in the spirit, started singing in their own language. And as people were singing, I heard a voice come and said, the stone that the builders rejected. The stone that the builders rejected. The stone that the builders rejected. I evangelized. The entire church was standing. I never understood that the man I was scared about the day before, he's kneeling down and he came kneeling up to my feet. I was in the spirit, but when I opened my eyes, I recognized him because he looked like a Chinese and he was sitting by my feet. These things worked. The other things worked. 
So he arose. He said, I beg you. That you anoint me with an anointing of a mega church because I have been preaching, but I've not gone beyond 20 believers. At that point, I felt that I had that anointing of the mega church. He was the first person to tell me that information. So I laid my hands on them. David behind his ship. After that, after several years, when I return, he has a mega church in Melbourne. Amen. This evening, you will be anointed with that oil. Hallelujah. God is giving that you and that that you will shepherd his sheep. Because God desires men and women with a heart of integrity and a skillful hand to lead his flock. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 This evening, the anointing of sheep. The anointing of God will flow. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 This evening will not just anoint you. It will take you to another dimension. To another dimension. You know my daughter. Your eyes were opened. Now and who is. You also don't understand your calling. You will get to know it later. Church of Rehoboth. What's happening here, you don't understand it yet. The fact that I'm here, you don't understand it. You don't understand it. Hallelujah. One day, you're going to know it. Because you're going to This evening, the air and atmosphere is opened in this place. Seraphine, please come forward. Hallelujah. Ah. Ma vuta, asani.